Hello everyone. Thank you for all your lovely comments on the King Philip IV videos, and I'm very pleasantly surprised uh, by your interest. I'm, I'm surprised there's an appetite for this kind of information out there. Rest assured, uh, this is not the last you'll see of King Philip's War. There is definitely much more coming down the line. I plan on making a couple more little documentaries. Um, but the uh, thing is, I live in Louisiana, and uh, I would love to be, be act the actual places you know, where this stuff happened. Uh, so next time I'm up in Massachusetts, the New England area, you know, I will definitely uh, try to sneak away and make some more documentaries for you guys. I would love to do a little kind of more in-depth piece about the Great Swamp Fight, especially if that meant I got to go to the Great Swamp Fight Monument in Rhode Island, which is really cool. It's a big, like, 2001 A Space Odyssey looking obelisk in the middle of the woods. It's really creepy and just really awesome, um, very, you know, cinematic. I would love to go into more depth about, you know, so many things. I mean, there's a lot that in this first video, uh, especially in the sort of the summary of King Philip's War, that I just didn't get to. You know, a um, uh, prime example would be, you know, the, uh, I mentioned her a bit in my Sudbury fight video, but Mary Rawlinson, uh, whose captivity na uh, narrative, you know, tells us so much about sort of, you know, the native side of the war. Um, I would love to talk more about her, kind of tell her story, uh, as well as uh, Weedamu, uh, Weedamu, excuse me, the um, uh, female sachem of the Sakonet, uh, who is actually Mary Rawlinson's mistress. You know, it's a really kind of cool story, you know, because there's this kind of prudish, prudish English woman. Uh, being held captive by this, like, no-nonsense, middle-aged female sachem, and, and their dynamic is really interesting. I'd love to sort of talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, Battle of Bloody Brook, obviously would love to go into much more detail about that. You know, the Angel of Hadley, that's a great little sort of chapter uh, from the war. So there's a lot more kind of where that came from. I also plan on doing some more kind of documentary style uh, videos, you know, with just the pictures and the sound effects and the color correction and you know, all that kind of good stuff, rather than just sort of me talking to camera. Uh, I, I want to do some more of those, you know, more kind of concerned with New Orleans and Louisiana history, which is where I live, which is where I'm at right now, especially the Battle of Liberty Place, the Slave Revolt of 1811. Um, so, uh, yeah, definitely kind of keep your eyes out for those as well. So, uh, anyway, the topic at hand. Um, some people have asked me kind of where the hell I get my information. And uh, the answer is many sources, many different places, but um, what I have have done is basically pilfered the Colonial America section of my bookshelf here uh, to uh, give you some book recommendations about King Philip's War. So I'm going to start with the primary sources here. Uh, here we have a brief history of the war with the Indians in New England. This is a, is a pretty good book. You know, most of it is just kind of a summary of, okay, now this town was burnt to the ground, and now this town was sacked, now this town was attacked. But if you're looking for just kind of, you know, accurate information about sort of the sequence of events of the war, or at least to have it just kind of like as a reference guide, I would recommend this for sure. Um, I, you know, I, I try to sort of deal with primary sources as much as possible, uh, because obviously, you know, I mean, a lot of these books were written within living memory of the war, and uh, barring, you know, old increases uh, various kind of biases, of which he had many, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Uh, a lot of good, probably very accurate stuff. So uh, the second one is the, the, the big boy, The Diary of King Philip's War by, of course, who else but Captain Benjamin Church. You track down Metacomet, you know, his men killed uh, Metacomet. Uh, so, you know, he emerged from the war, you know, pretty much a hero, and he wrote his memoir. Now, this is a seminal text in the history of King Philip's War. All the historians who have uh, uh, studied King Philip's War have read this guy. Keep in mind, however, <laughs> that Benjamin Church uh, is, he's a lot like, I don't know, I, I would compare him to Julius Caesar, you know, in like the Gallic Wars. So he writes about himself in the third person, and he has a very high opinion of himself. Like, clearly Benjamin Church thought that he was just the most awesome guy who ever lived. He has all the good ideas, he does all the most heroic stuff. You got to take it with a bit of a grain of salt. But again, you know, with written within living memory of the war. Um, I believe this was published in 1704, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so speaking of dry primary sources, uh, this is perhaps the driest and most boring of the bunch, but I would still recommend it. So this is A Narrative of the Indian Wars in New England 
from the first planting in 1607 to 1677, with a relation of the occasion, rise, and progress of the war with the Indians in the southern, western, eastern, and northern parts of the country, by William Hubbard. Woo boy, that's a mouthful. As you can see, it's pretty much just like somebody just photocopied it. I don't know, it's probably not going to be in focus here, but I feel like review bra showing you the sandwich, but... Unfortunately, not all of it's, you know, photocopied terribly well, or I don't know if this was the printer who, you know, made this, this error, but some of it is a little hard to read. I don't think there's too much else to say about it other than the fact, yes, it is a primary source and it has, you know, just a lot of good information, a lot of first-hand accounts, all that kind of stuff. Pretty reliable, uh, at least English history. Uh, so let's move on to our secondary sources here. Uh, so this is, I think, the book that most people have read about King Philip's War, or most people who have sort of know about it have read. Um, this is uh, Mayflower by Nathaniel Philbrick. Uh, so the, the basically like the last half of this book is about King Philip's War. Um, and, you know, the first half is about the Mayflower, Massasoit, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, Philbrick is a great author. I mean, I really, really enjoy his stuff. Uh, he really kind of, you know, he's just can tell a good story. You know what I mean? It really kind of keeps you engaged. Uh, if you want, if you just kind of want like an introduction to the war, if you're kind of, you know, if, if my video maybe was the first you've ever heard of it, I would recommend this, just because it's very digestible. Don't do William Hubbard and Benjamin Church and, and Increase Mather. Don't, don't even touch those guys, because, you know, you'll make it about five pages in before, uh, uh, you know, blood starts coming out of your ears. This is just a really great sort of even-handed account, um, uh, just rip-roaring tale. Would definitely recommend it. And here's the big boy, my favorite, another big boy. This is my favorite book about uh, King Philip's War, and it remains the definitive text, historical text about the war. Flintlock and Tomahawk by Douglas Edward Leach. So it's kind of depressing because, I mean, this is the definitive historical text about King Philip's War, and it was published in 1957. Like, this is, I mean, there have been, you know, plenty of wonderful books published since then about the war, but the fact that there has not been an, just an in-depth examination of the war, you know, an in-depth sort of chronicle of the events of the war since 1957 is a crying shame. It is a crime against humanity, an absolute travesty, um, especially since uh, old Dougie Leach, he was writing in the 50s, okay, so... There are some, you know, kind of antiquated terms in here. Um, if you yourself are Native American, I would not read this book because uh, you will throw it at the wall. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I, I mean, Doug Leach, I mean, I can just imagine him, you know, just like typing away at the typewriter going, <laughs> smoking his Lucky Strikes guy, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, and please forgive me, but, you know, there's a lot in here about like the savages and the heathens and that kind of stuff. It's like, uh... Uh, yeah, this desperately needs to be rewritten for the 21st century. Uh, this a similar kind of thing, just like super in-depth, um, all of the major battles kind of chronicled in excruciating detail. This really needs to be, you know, the story that really needs to be told in this way. Um, if you're a historian and you're watching this, write this book. And if you don't, I will. Uh, so this is an interesting little known book about King Philip's War, Igniting King Philip's War. It's by Yasuhide Kawashima, excuse me, uh, if, Mr. Kawashima, if I'm just totally butchering your name. Um, this is about the John Sassamon murder trial, and this is a really cool book. Uh, it's just one little kind of bit about King Philip's War, um, one just kind of little aspect of it, but it goes into a lot of detail, and it's really fascinating. And there's a lot of cool just kind of legal stuff good stuff about praying Indians and about John Sassamon's life, which was fascinating. I mean, that guy had a really interesting life. I should do a video about him. I mean, my God, I should do, do a video about this, uh, you know, about the John Sassamon murder trial. You know, it's like To Kill a Mockingbird. It's like thrilling stuff. Yeah, igniting King Philip's War. Um, I will say, uh, um, you know, English is not Mr. Kawashima's first language. Sometimes you can tell when you're reading the book, um, but uh, even so, I would check it out you are going to have a lot of really good information in this book. So, uh, the last one I wanted to show you is King Philip's War, The History and Legacy of America's Forgotten Conflict. Um, this is a more recent book. It's by Eric B. Schultz and Michael J. Tugies. Tugies. 
So uh, this is more of kind of a travel guide than an actual history, which is kind of cool. Uh, the first half of the book is, uh, is basically just like a summary of the events of the war, you know. This definitely has one up on, on old Dougie Leach because it does sort of, you know, have more kind of Native American uh, voices in it, you know, as more, kind of less of a sort of one-sided approach to the history. Um, if you live in, the, in New England, in that area, and you want to go to the battlefields or to just generally the places where this stuff happened, this is the book for you. Because just the, the, this is, they have pictures, they have maps, they have basically like directions, you know, it's just like, take this road, go down this dirt path, you know, you will see this rock, that kind of stuff. This is my sort of the, the main sort of secondary source that I used when researching the Sudbury fight, um, because it has a lot of good information just about the individual battles. And, uh, yeah, and, oh, my God, I still need to make a video about, like, Nine Men's Misery and that kind of stuff. I, I should go to Mount Hope as well. You know, I should make a video Mount Hope where, where uh, Meta Comet died. But anyway, check this guy out. Check this one out. All right, folks. Well, that's, those are all of the uh, books that I currently have um, about King Philip's War. I remain uh, committed to giving you guys good historical information uh, that is without bias and about just little tidbits of history that most people don't know about. I'm basically sharing all my useless <laughs> trivia and information uh, with hopefully interested people. <laughs> those noises. What are those noises? What are those noises?